Howdy y'all, Joe Hills here, recording as I always do in Nashville, Tennessee. And I was just looking at like this little trail I got set up here for folks to approach Castle Ravenloft along. And, you know, it occurred to me, just having the drawbridge in place and this terrifying trench full of things that'll kill you, you know, that's a good start. But really, when people come through the gates here, there should be something. And it's not really clear from the maps what that something should be. But what I would imagine that something should be is a path that definitely leads to the front door, right? That much is obvious. We should just, you know, come in here with some shovels and just start cutting, uh, I don't know, cutting a path, spading a trail. Blazing a trail is a good way to do it. If we brought actual blazes out here, they can't catch anything on fire either because fire spread is turned off on the server. So, you know, that's good to know. But, you know, that looks... Okay, really, it's a bit narrow. So, you know, just like we prefer to broaden our horizons by punching things that are on fire, I figure we'll blaze our trail by doing the same thing. Torches, my fists do not fear you. I am like the Iron Fist from the Marvel thing, whose fists punch torches. I actually haven't seen Iron Fist, so I'm making things up as I go. But you know what? I haven't seen the new Star Wars either, so I'm probably, you know, in good company kind of one of those things where like you know I didn't see the first Star Wars for like a decade or more after it came out and same thing with Ghostbusters like these are movies that I've always perceived as kind of like a period piece you know and it doesn't make sense to me to see them at the same time that they came out because that's not how I saw the originals but where were we so this trail this is a good start here it clearly leads people to the front door but, you know, I was thinking about this, and realistically, there should also be some sort of trails that lead to each of these gates, right? We've got the stable over here, and the servants area, and then the other gate on the other side doesn't necessarily have to be as well-tread, because this uh, is actually kind of from a castle standpoint, or from a design standpoint, this quadrant here of the uh, kind of castle courtyard is the least interesting to um, players, the way the game is just designed, right? It has no doors. The only windows it has, you know, access a room that is also accessible from the other side of the courtyard, and uh, there's just nothing over here, you know? The other courtyard at least has the stable, so, which as you can see through here, um, that would be an obvious point of interest for people to visit when they're coming in with their uh, goods or horses or whatever, carriages. And it also has the servant's entrance and a bunch of ground floor windows that the players could break in through as well if they wanted, you know? So this definitely will be an area that's going to have a path to it. This is where the carriage goes. It needs a path. I'm not sure if it needs a full path or if it should have carriage ruts. Although now that I think about it, horses don't usually walk in the carriage ruts, so the path should probably be as wide as the carriage would be, and then kind of, I don't know, go this way. Now, when I think about carriages, too, horses and carriages don't like making sharp turns, and so really, the carriage um, path should line up with the gate here initially, and this gate is just as wide. Oh, actually, this this is even wider, I'm realizing. Why can't I hit this with a the shovel? There we go. Oh, interesting. I can't actually uh, get the ones under the iron without breaking the iron. Well, we'll come back to that. That's an interesting problem. But so, this path here starts off maybe five wide, or maybe it should only be three wide. Three wide is simpler. Three meters is actually probably about what a carriage should be width-wise. But, so, we would have this path kind of come out here initially, but then it strikes me that it should move, move diagonally. And here is where we get into real trouble. I don't even have any extra dirt. Ooh. Or very many ender pearls. So, it's going to be a good decision to run down here, grab some extra dirt real quick, and then ender pearl out before the mobs get us. I don't see any mobs, but, you know, better safe than sorry. So, here we go. Just gonna put...
put that there. All right. So, it occurs to me that what I want to do is just... Oops. Oh, dang it. The grass is not going to spread to that one if I don't uh, leave that there for the time being. But what I probably want to do is have this come diagonally this way. And then turn to meet this. Or maybe it should come out at an angle. So this is three wide here, actually, right? So maybe it should come out at an angle that is like this until it eventually meets up with that path. I don't know if this would be too steep. Whoops. Dang it, that's definitely wrong. And immediately regret getting rid of the axe. There's no piece of inventory item here that I really don't want in my hot bar. But okay. So, yeah, we could have this kind of come this way diagonally. I'm not sure if that's going to be sharp enough, though. Let's see, where would that meet? That would meet up around here. So, dang it. Dang it, blocks. Every part of this is going just as well as I would expect, which is how I say, you know, pretty poorly. So we'll leave that for now. And then we'll have this start cutting over this way, I guess. And I hope it kind of lines up. Now, we don't want to have the carriage cut too close to the building corner because carriage wheels and stone are like sticks and stones, and they will break your bones. But you know what? So will words. So, you know, you got to be considerate of people and their feelings, too. There's a lot of levels that this uh, carriage operates on, and we need to just smoothly integrate all of them into a better sense of universal consciousness. Universal. Dang it. Controversial and universal are not words that combine very well. Hmm. So let's not do that. Okay, so this is going to come this way, like so, and it's okay. Whoops. I might have to go a little bit steeper on some part of this here in order to make it really work, but core concept, kind of introducing some of this. Now, I am also curious, like, can I get away with leaving these torches here for the grid? Dang it. And, uh, can I get away with leaving these torches here for now? And just planting a bunch of bones around them? Or is that going to be its own whole thing where I'm going to have to, um, like... Because I can use bone meal to make uh, weeds grow and tall grass. But I think the torches themselves might still be too distracting. So, yeah, here we go. This is definitely going to have to kind of curve more for this to work. And so we're going to kind of cut this a little wider here. And give it some variation, just to make it seem more organic, right? This is not necessarily a, a cobble path. This is just something that should cut kind of naturally through here. Whoops, forgot that. That won't regrow if we do that. So we're going to do that first. Okay. So yeah, now the carriages, when they come along here, can kind of start going this way. And wander around the side of the building. Kind of along this uh, general path. There we go. And we might want to cut this corner a little bit here. Just to kind of show that that's generally how that happens. And yeah, that's, that's feeling pretty alright. Now, the biggest problem with doing anything too fancy with the grass here is that if we lose the light, mobs are going to start spawning en masse, and we can't afford a massive influx of mobs. In fact, we can't even afford to plant a bunch of weeds right now because we are out of bone meal. So you know what we do when we run out of bone meal? We go borrow a cup of bones from our neighbor. Let's head over to Mumbo Jumbo's base and see if he has a Dumbo the Elephant size crate of bones that we can grind up to make our bread. No, we're not ogres. We're out of bed when the sun is up. Because ogres don't do that, they turn to stone. Or is that trolls? I don't know. Anyway, boom. Let's see. 
Okay. Yeah, there should be enough bone meal, whoops, to uh, get us through getting that whole field planted. And if it's not, then I will feel bad about this decision later and come back. Easy enough. So, time skip. Here we are in our field of gridded torches, and I just figure if we just run around with bone meal and then pull up all the flowers, that'll probably be pretty good. Like, this is gonna just get a good sense of, like, overgrowth, and, you know, we can come back in and replace these torches with pumpkins and cover them with uh, dark green wool or something later on. But for right now... Uh, this is all right, and oh my goodness, we're gonna have to pull all the yellow flowers. I think I might leave the red flowers, because I do think that they are sufficiently ominous. And I might even go find some other flowers to mix in here. I think you can remove flowers with shears, or actually, no, just punching. Yay! Punch a flower. Actually, don't in real life. You know, it's funny, because speaking of punching, I watched a movie about punching with my daughter um, yesterday night. We watched the uh, Thor Ragnarok film, and it became really clear really fast that her education has not included any Norse mythology. You know, she has never heard of Thor. She has never heard of Loki. She's never heard of Odin or the Bifrost or Norway. And, you know, at a certain point, I can only blame myself. Like, we got out the globe, and I showed her where Norway was, and... She asked also where Asgard is, and I was like, well, that's a different thing. But, you know, step by step, slowly building an idea of what the world is like for a child is a really interesting challenge. She's been getting into, like, the states of the United States recently, and, like, uh, kind of being able to tell the difference between a city, a county, a state, and a nation, which is kind of harder than you would think for a child to grasp in some ways because I mean in fairness like a lot of this stuff didn't exist before the Treaty of Westphalia at least not in its like modern nation state form but like it's a uh, just funny like what kids latch on to and um, let's see so this is already kind of feeling a little bit more overgrown and like not being able to see the path once you're off it is also a little bit Nice. I really like this. And one option is also to have the grass get thicker the further you get from the path. Like maybe the horses have been grazing on it or something. And I'm not 100% sure how that's going to look. But yeah, I gotta say, this already is like fixing my torch grid problems. Like, this is great. So, once again, uh, throw bones at the problem. Solved. But yeah, it's been um, it's been good taking Corinne to different conventions and stuff. Like she went to Play on Con with me last year down in Alabama, and she went to Pack South in Texas, and in San Antonio. And so she's got like a sense, like okay, San Antonio is a city in the state of Texas. Dallas is a different city that I've visited in Texas. You know, so uh, just like the more you get your kid out in the world, kind of the easier the world is for them to grasp. And, like, we had talked about, like, you know, taking her on international trips and stuff. And it's kind of one of those things, like, I don't know how much she's going to get out of it. But, like, I also don't know how much she's going to get out of it. Like, she might get a lot out of it. But it's really expensive to take a kid anywhere internationally, so. Probably not immediately a priority. But in the short term, trips to Minnesota or Texas or uh, Florida really kind of help her get a grasp of geography and yeah it's kind of neat watching little kids brain grow that understanding you know the torches actually look kind of like flowers in interesting ways here I wonder how this will look when it's dark I'm actually pretty happy with this this is this is way better than I was expecting when I started this episode okay so let's go ahead and run around and do the backfield of this too, I guess. I'm actually kind of tempted to keep the yellow flowers to some degree, but maybe I would like remove 90% of them and replace them with, like, 
take out some of them and replace them with other colored flowers that are like scarier like i feel like a dark purple flower would look good at night and oh the problem is too the torches are going to light all this up at night pretty well so the yellow is going to stand out way more in the nighttime than it does during the day so yeah okay you can kind of add some of the taller grass as well just to make it clear that this is not particularly well kept but i don't want to do that like this shouldn't look like a cornfield of double grass just having a little bit along the walls would be good. You know, I almost wonder if I should put vines along these walls. I've been putting off thinking about it, but eh, I'll come back to that later. Okay, so let's go ahead and run around and add some more grass. Time skip. All right, well, look at this. This is way better than what we had before. You know, and I was kind of thinking maybe what I should do is for the paths that shouldn't be, like, quite as obvious, like, go in to here, you know, we'll just kind of clear up some of the grass a little bit and just kind of have it obvious that there's some sort of walkway here. But, you know, it's not going to be exactly maybe quite as uh, defined as the cart path, right? So we've got the nice clear cart path here, then we've got this kind of walkway here, which, uh, you know, kind of meanders a little bit. Then we have something kind of similar carved around here, you know. Maybe there's a, uh, just a small pathway here that kind of hugs. It doesn't hug the building, but it would kind of just generally travel this way, you know. So when you emerge in this spot and you're like, where do I go? There's kind of a hint of a path here. That might not be wide enough, but like, yeah. See, that definitely feels more like a path. Uh oh, there are monsters spawning up there. That is bad. I do not like that. Anyway, so, core concept. This whole thing is looking way better than it did before. I would love if you guys had any comments on ways that you would like to see this area improved. And I will definitely read any such comments that you all leave. So, anyway... Until next time, y'all, this is Joe Hills from Nashville, Tennessee. Keep adventuring.